Hello and welcome. A few weeks ago, we brought you the story of Peter Dupree, a man who was involved in a devastating cycling accident. But despite the 2003 tragedy, Peter defied his physical challenges to prove that most limitations only exist in the mind. When Peter's story aired, he'd been preparing for an international sporting event. We visited him a few days ago to find out how it all went. Peter Dupree has always been a sportsman who aimed for nothing less than excellence. I was into triathlon um, and cycling and running and I came from a running background at school. I did compete provincially in like biathlon, provincially in like cross country at school level. Um, and then also at varsity, I made the South African students team. Each race and competition brought him a step closer to the international sports stage. I had the Olympic dream, you know, from, from early on, since I was six years old. But that dream was nearly shattered as he was reaching the prime of his career. In 2003, Peter was cycling in Johannesburg. when a car came out of nowhere and hit him. He suffered several broken bones, but far more serious, a severe neck injury paralyzed him from the chest down. I always told people if I could move my legs, um, then my life would probably be over because I was so big in sport. But even in the face of adversity, his athletic spirit couldn't be crushed he chose to look forward. A lot of people look at what gets taken away from you um, in, in bad situations. And luckily the way my head works is I look at what gets, you know, what is given to me or what I still have. Peter was discharged after several weeks in ICU. Frustratingly, he faced daily struggles with tasks most people take for granted. First time I put one sock on, it took 15 minutes, one sock. So I decided I need to dress myself fully the one day with how I do it and time it. And that took me 50 minutes, so 5-0. But the athlete was no stranger to beating the clock. And then before I opened my eyes, there I was, fully dressed, 15 minutes. And then I decided, okay, well, I'm not gonna stop it there. Because as you see yourself getting faster, it motivates you to, and I mean motivates you with other things as well. By 2005, Peter was fully independent, returning to sports to take part in hand cycling. He realized his childhood dream last year, representing Team South Africa at the London Paralympics. His next challenge, to take part in the Ironman, an international competition known for its grueling length and harsh race conditions. In my own mind, a greater achievement than even a gold medal at the Paralympics will be to finish a full Ironman as a quad. Because that, in my mind, is just still impossible. On the 11th of May, Peter travelled to Australia to face off against 1,600 able-bodied athletes. What lay before him, a 90-kilometre bike ride, roughly 2 kilometres of swimming and a 20-kilometre wheelchair push. It seemed ridiculous for a quadriplegic sportsman who could hardly move his fingers, some crucial arm muscles and legs. He's got 15% less upper body strength than the rest of us and then zero lower body strength. So he only uses his biceps and his uh, shoulders. He doesn't even have triceps or forearms or anything like that. 
I mean, even for a, a able-bodied person, um, you know, you can't just rock up on the day and just go do it. You know, it takes a lot of dedication and training. Um, and then, I mean, for, for a person with my disability, first of all, most people just say it's impossible. But in the end, it was sheer persistence that would prove most people wrong. It's funny, when I crossed that line at that stage, I was so dizzy and de dehydrated or I don't know, I just, I just couldn't see properly, I, mean, you know, I, was, I was pretty tired. Um, so at that moment it felt great, but it, it was like the half an hour afterwards when I was lying on the ground flat on my back um, in transition area when I realized, yes, I actually did this. Not only did Peter finish the race, he smashed it. The normal cut-off time for able-bodied athletes was eight and a half hours. Peter finished it in just over six hours, rewriting sporting history and making South Africa proud. It was an incredible day, um, and yeah, it's an incredible feeling to think I'm the first squad ever in the world to do a, a half Ironman. You know, so it's a nice feeling, and nobody can ever take that away from me. Well done, Peter. Send us your feedback and let us know what you think against all odds at enca.com. You can also be in touch with us on Twitter and Facebook. Coming up, from a parking lot to the global market. News that moves. enca.com.